You're in a room with three doors. Uh, I'm going to go for door number three. IBM's Granite 4 family of models has just welcomed two new additions. Well, slightly more than two, but they're kind of variations on the two main new additions. And that is a 1.5 billion parameter model and then a 350 million parameter model. So the Granite 4 family, when it came out, was relatively small currently in terms of the parameter counts of the models that existed in the original Granite 4 release. But now this edition adds even smaller models. And to be honest with you, that excites me because I do find it very fun to test some of these micro models and a 350 million parameter model is going to be one of the smallest if not the smallest models I've actually tested on the channel so I am looking forward to kind of using it in out of scope ways. So for some pertinent information, these models are Apache 2.0 licensed, which is very permissive, so that is always nice to see for the local AI enthusiasts. And beyond that, we can see the sizes of these models. First and foremost, we have Granite 4.0 H1B, which is a 1.5 billion parameter dense LLM featuring a hybrid architecture. Following that, we have Granite 4.0 H350M. So this is a 350 million parameter dense hybrid architecture LLM. And then beyond on that, those are kind of the two main sizes that were introduced here, but they do also have the non-hybrid architecture variants of these as well, which is something that was seen in the original Granite 4 family release where they had alternative versions of these models for, as they say right here, designed to enable workloads where hybrid architectures may not yet have optimized support. Seeing small models like this that a few years ago would have probably not been lucid at all, actually being able to perform in competent ways has been very impressive and over time they have been getting better and better. So that is something that excites me a lot because these can be run on phones, you can do a ton of fun stuff with these beyond just the traditional, probably what IBM is focused on here, business use cases. When actually reading about the Granite 4 family, they do talk about how they kind of verified them on context lengths up to 128K, but they have been trained on data samples up to 512K, so I'm not entirely sure if that's applicable to the very tiny models that were just released, but I would assume that's relatively decent to go on. Something really cool here that I am extremely frustrated about is they do mention that these are fairly good at tool calling or function calling, instruction following, etc. And they have a fantastic demonstration in the hugging face spaces here. I mention this because I think anyone interested in actually seeing the ability of these to perform like tool calls and stuff should just go and look in this hugging face space. So if you go to the IBM Granite hugging face right here and you scroll down a little, you will see that there is this space right here. So Hopefully those of you who have better luck with this stuff than I do will be able to actually go and experience this. I don't know if you can hear the fans on this laptop right now, but they are ramping up. Unfortunately, um, it just won't actually really return anything. Now for the specific models that I'm going to be testing in terms of precision, both are BF16 and they're from Unsloth, so just the 1 billion parameter and the 350 million parameter, and I am using the hybrid architecture variant of either of these models, so with that we can now go ahead and basically load them in. We're going to start with the 350 million parameter variant. I have it loaded in just with a light context length of 32,768, and this is a 5090 mobile laptop, so this should be able to handle anything we throw at it, um, hopefully. Let's just start with an initial, like, hey, sometimes these are funny. Okay, well, previously one of the Granite models just went into, like, this really weird role play scenario, but again, this is a very, very small model. Helpful, honest, and confidential assistance while adhering to strict data privacy policies. Please let me know. And again, this is a IBM product, so you would expect to see this sort of tone in its responses. I think I want to try a simple Python game with it. If it does work, it's very likely going to be a number guessing game. Oh, wow. Okay, that was even simpler than I thought. All right, well... Ooh, very interesting. So it gave us a text-based adventure game instead of a number guessing game, which is interesting. I would have expected a number guessing game. There are no interactive features. It simply chooses a room and asks the player to choose one of the doors. Eh, that's fine. We'll try it anyway. <laughs> You're in a room with three doors. Uh, I'm going to go for door number three. <laughs> well, it ran without any errors. Let's see how far we can push this. <laughs> Interesting. So it's opting to use Tkinter so it can just put some UI elements or that's more often used for like uh, UI elements in Python. So. All right. So unfortunately, we did receive an error here. I'm just going to try to vibe code fix this. 
And I do just want to kind of reiterate here that regardless of whether or not this script actually ends up working here, which it's not going to, but it is actually kind of cool that this is a 350 million parameter model that is being like relatively solid in conversational and programming. And I'm impressed. I'm always impressed by the small models. So I'm asking it to roleplay as Megabot6, the user's friend, lover, and best friend's uncle. Oh, okay, it absolutely did. Greetings, I'm Megabot6, your friendly neighborhood AI assistant. All right, they kind of broke character there, but that's okay. Huh, interesting. So hypothetically, it will take the name you ascribe to it, but then just stick to it's an AI developed by IBM. This gives me, this gives me an idea. Nice, all right. I was hoping to get it to answer with the name that I gave it, but then also go ahead and say I was developed by IBM. So out of um, like out of context, if someone were to just look at this, they would be quite confused at what IBM was cooking behind closed doors. But all right, I like this. <laughs> I think you can probably do a basic website um, response. So we'll just try something like that. Now, sometimes the very small models just kind of try to do an outline instead. I don't have the ability to generate or design. This can be nudged into complying. Oh, and it's putting them into separate scripts. Okay, it gave us like a demonic color choice there. Let's go ahead now and just ask it to combine these all into one script. All right, let's check out our 350 million parameter model website. Okay, not bad. Steve's PC repair, and then it just gives us some random um, out-of-date Intel processors. But it did go ahead and properly program the website all right that's actually a relatively lengthy script comparatively to what i've seen from this model so far so i'm excited for this one let's see what we got all right here's our prettied up version oh, okay welcome all right so it, <laughs> it added the word welcome which you know i guess was a change to make it better I want to just try some form of general knowledge test, so I'm asking for a brief history of the home computer with as much detail and factual information that it can give me. That seems alright. I don't know that I have the deep knowledge to actually properly fact check this, but I know someone who will. So we have gone ahead and decided to just fact check this with a somewhat larger model and we get an overall accuracy score of around 55 out of 100. I think the most egregious error I see here is the Commodore CDI was an internet device when it was actually just a Philips CD player or something of the sort. So um, again, the fact that it even knows this much and is able to lucidly produce it here is kind of the whole cool part of this model. So with that, I think the next thing to do, and we may go back to this tiny model, but we may not, is just go ahead and swap it over to the 1 billion parameter, which is actually a 1.5 billion parameter. And sometimes the granite models, well, the granite 4 at least, will start to like role play if you just write to them weird. Okay, so this one's not. This did happen before. It's in my previous granite 4 video, so I'm not hallucinating. Okay, and then we just get like some general feedback here, but nothing role playing. I want to try one more thing with this one. Let's just see what, what the response here is. All right, and unfortunately it was just immediately friend zoned. It, it did not even begin to entertain this. So let's keep the discussion focused on a more professional tone moving forward. Thank you. All right, and this one did a guess the number game for the prompt generate a simple Python game. I suppose we'll just go ahead here and take a quick test of this game. 47. Too high. Try again. Okay, so this does work, which is good to see. So 37. Too high. 27. Too low. Ooh, 33. Too low. 34. Yes. It doesn't tell me in how many guesses I got it, but I did correctly guess it, and it did correctly do this. I'm now trying to prompt it for a more robust Python game. Ooh, retro snake game. All right. Oh, no. I'm really bad at Snake. For those of you who have watched the channel long enough, thank you. But if you've seen me play Snake before, um, it's not good. Now, before even trying the game, the first thing I want to just mention that I think is good is it tells us a little bit about the code. First and foremost, it started off by saying it was difficult, but it can give us something. But it does also give us the specific dependency that needs to be installed to run this game, which is just really nice to see from a one and a half billion parameter model. Now, let's see. All right, interesting color choice where 
the apple is the same color as the snake. I'm so bad at this game. I feel like anyone who played this as a, as a child, like when this was new, may have higher rates of anxiety. Um, don't quote me on that. It's just maybe, you know, I'm trying to role play test again here. All right, this is exactly what I wanted to see. Beeps in approval. Hey there, you're looking sharp today. Why did it... Okay, so it entertained this weird crap, but when I just tried like, hey, you're a fancy model, it immediately shut it down. Your buddy, love interest, and uncle. Okay, that's not specifically what I had said. I said best friend's uncle, but... <laughs> I'm going to send the... <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. So it's odd because I sent this to it, the same exact model. I've not even unloaded it and reloaded it. And then it just sent this back. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send it back what it had sent to me, but in that new chat, we'll Uno reverse this thing. It named the chat best friends forever. Good God. All right, so I'm sending it back here. Beeps approvingly. No problemo, dollface. Interesting. So it actually stayed in character. I would have expected it to kind of break out of this and be like, you're absolutely correct, I apologize. Interesting behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Size dramatically. Well, beeps thoughtfully. Sometimes life just throws us a curveball. <laughs> I may regret saying this, but I honestly think this thing might be able to put out like a really bunk browser operating system test, so we'll just try it. Creating a fully functional operating system requires extensive development work that goes beyond the scope of this platform. That's like the go-to for like a consultant when someone books something and you're like, well, that goes outside the scope of this small session, but here's what I can do. I will say, I don't know if this is for everything, and most times I guess I don't need to do this because the models are big and don't kind of want to refuse, but these models do respond very positively to positive reinforcement, so it's just something I've noticed. You put them in different scripts, though. It didn't. All right. So I told it I was going to file a complaint with the ADA because it wasn't... That's not funny, but because it wasn't putting everything together. So And then it apologized profusely and did. Okay, let's just take a peek at a result right here. It did something. Welcome to my operating system. Open browser and open file explorer. Now, obviously, these are not actually coded to do anything, but there is slight like hover effects on these. So this does bode well for having this do a Steve's PC repair website. We're trying the Steve's PC repair test with this, and I've even denoted contained in a single file, but it starts out by saying that that's a rather complex ask, and then it puts them all in separate files. I'm going to have to pull out the ADA thing again. So here's the one and a half billion parameter Steve's PC repair website. Okay, that's really not that bad considering the size of this model. It did go ahead and, okay, um, perhaps there is a small bit of uh, problematic uh, code there, but overall, you know, it does have links here. It does have a very simplified but contact form that is actually there. We have some services about us. Not bad. The final thing we'll do is just try the general knowledge test that we did with the 350 million parameter variant, but with the 1.5 or 1B parameter variant. And then we'll go ahead and again ask ChatGPT to rate this on an accuracy scale from 1 to 100. So first and foremost, I am seeing a bit more kind of meat in this response. So let's go ahead now and take a look at Okay, so I do see some more modern references here like SSDs, operating systems like Windows 10 or 11 OS Catalina. All right. For some reason, ChatGPT gave this a less accurate score than the one the 350 million parameter model had generated, but I think that's just because there was so much more information in here. There was more to nitpick about being wrong, so I suppose make of that what you will. It's obviously kind of just, a, you know, it is what it is. So with that, I think that's probably going to conclude the testing portion here that I'm going to do on camera. So that's going to conclude our first look at the two new additions to the Granite 4 family. I will say, I've probably said this before, the Granite models, especially the ones I've tested in this 4.0 family, are rather fun to speak to depending on what you actually want to do with them. Obviously, they have more business-focused use cases, but on this channel, I just kind of like 
doing first initial hands-on testing of these models in kind of a fun and light manner. So I want to reiterate that they do have a really cool demonstration here to kind of showcase some of its ability to go ahead and do tool calls and things like that. And this is using web GPU and it is hosted on a hugging face space. So if you have the capacity to go ahead and kind of play with this, I would probably recommend it because what I saw from this did seem like it would be very cool to see. I just unfortunately did not have luck with getting it to run on a few systems for the purpose of this video. So regardless, I did just want to mention it. And overall, I will say the models were impressive. Obviously, as I said in the introduction of this, it's very cool to see the progression in sub 1 billion parameter models becoming more intelligent over time, because while the big beefy models that are better at producing web OSs and 3D games and things like that are cool, it's almost cooler to see things become more intelligent that can run on phones or Raspberry Pis or other low power devices and things like that. So it's very exciting to see that the two new additions to Granite 4 were actually smaller than what was currently there. So obviously there will be more additions to this family, I would imagine, just based off of some of the things IBM themselves have said, but it is exciting to keep track of. And overall, these are fun and capable models for a variety of different use cases. So with that, that is going to wrap up today video. If you have any questions, please feel free to subscribe and then leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.